Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you how to find the centroid of a pyramid. Now notice we have the base here centered at the origin, and here's the tip. Let's say that the height of the pyramid is equal to h. And you can see that the base of the pyramid is a, a 2a by 2a. It makes it a little bit easier to figure out the centroid. Again, just like before, we're going to find a small little volume slice, like so. And the height of that slice would be 2 times y. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see here because of the angle here, but let's say that the height from the center here would be equal to y. And um, it's, it's a square slice. So let me try to make it look like a square slice like this. The dv, let me draw the dv, is equal to, so we have a small little rectangular slice And the height of the slice is 2y. And of course, the width of the slice would also be 2y because it's a square base. And the thickness would be a dx. So the dv would be uh, air, side times side, which is 2y quantity squared times dx would be the volume of that little slice. Now to find the x-coordinate of the centroid, the equation that we use, it's equal to the integral of the x-coordinate of the slice and that would be somewhere right in the middle, a distance x away from the origin. And we multiply the times the dv, and we're going to divide that by the integral of the dv. Now the integral of the dv represents the volume of this pyramid, and the volume of the pyramid is one-third the base times the height. So we can replace the integral of dv in the denominator by one-third the base times the height. In the numerator, we get the integral of x times dv, and dv is a quantity of 2y squared times dx. Divide the whole thing by the volume of the um, pyramid, which is one-third the base, 2 times a squared times the height h. Notice that I made the base 2a by 2a instead of a by a. There's a reason why I did that, and you'll see just in a moment. Because what we need to do now is somehow write y in terms of x. Here we have a relationship between y and x. Notice that the slope can be found, or the equation can be found as follows. y is equal to mx plus b. And in this particular case, we can see that, um, interesting, OK. We can see that uh, the height here is a, and the run is h, so it's the, the drop <clears throat> Let me start to go over again. So to find the slope of this, what we can do is we can say that y is equal to the rise over the run, but in this case, instead of a rise, we have a drop. The drop is a, and the run is h times x plus b. Now we do have a b. The, the intercept of b is equal to a when x is equal to 0. So that would be plus a. What we then can do, hmm. I didn't work it out this way. Hang on a second. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess I'll work it out like this because that's the way I have to work it out. Okay. Make it a little bit more complicated. What we can now do is go ahead and substitute this into here. See what we get next. This is equal to, we can take 2 squared outside integral sign. This is 4 times the integral of x times y squared. y squared would be this quantity squared minus a over h times x plus a quantity squared times dx and divide the whole thing by 1 third times 4a squared times h. Notice, we can already get rid of this 4 and this 4. Next thing, what we need to do is square this so we can integrate it. So the x-coordinate of the centroid is equal to the integral of x times, when we square the first term, we get a squared over h squared times x squared. We multiply this times this, we get minus, and then double that, we get minus 2 
a squared divided by h times x. Let's see if that's correct. This times this is a squared over h times x, a squared over h times x. We double that and we have a minus sign. And then finally we have plus a squared times dx and the whole thing divided by one third a squared h. We can notice here that every term in the numerator has an a squared. So we can take out the a squared. That makes it a little bit easier. We get a squared times, and we'll end up with three integrals. We have 1 over h squared times x cubed minus 2 times, the a squared is gone, over h times x times x gives me x squared. And the a squared is gone, but we do still have an x, so plus x times dx. And the whole thing divided by 1 third a squared times h. Now notice we have an a squared here, we have an a squared there, that cancels. Now we can integrate. The x coordinate of the centroid is equal to, integrating the first one, we get 1 over 4 h squared times x to the fourth, evaluated from 0 to h, minus 2 over 3h times x cubed, evaluated from 0 to h, plus x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to h, and the whole thing divided by 1 third h. Let's now plug in the upper limit. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0, so we only need to plug in the upper limit. This is equal to h to the fourth divided by 4h squared. Here we get h to the third minus 2 h to the third divided by 3h, and here we get plus h squared divided by 2, and the whole thing divided by 1 third h. Simplifying a little bit more, this is equal to h squared divided by 4 minus 2 h squared divided by 3, and here we get plus h squared divided by 2, the whole thing divided by 1 third h. Common denominator in the numerator looks like that's going to be 12. This is equal to, oh, and we can already get rid of this h and each one of those h's. That makes it a little bit easier. Common denominator is 12, which means we have 3 h over 12 minus 3 goes into 12 four times minus 8h over 12, 2 goes into 12 6 times, plus 6h over 12, and the whole thing divided by 1 third, which is the same as multiplying times 3. 3 plus 6 is 9, minus 8 is 1. So that gives us 1h over 12 divided by 1 third, let me go over here to finish it. The x coordinate is equal to h over 12 divided by 1 over 3, which is equal to 3 over 1 times h over 12. So x coordinate is equal to 3 divided by 12, the same as 1 over 4, or h over 4 is the final answer for this particular problem. It's a lot of algebra there, but eventually we did get the right answer. What we can say here is that the x coordinate of the pyramid, or the x coordinate of the centroid of the pyramid, is one quarter the distance from the origin because we have the base here against the origin. So there's the distance. From there to there, the distance is h divided by 4, which makes that the centroid of the pyramid.